Hello, and welcome to the webcast, Recent Advances in Solid Phase Extraction for the Determination of a Full Range of Organic Compounds from Challenging Samples. Our speaker for today is David Gallagher, a Senior Application and Technical Specialist at Horizon Technology. I'll start with an overview of how solid phase extraction fits into the overall extraction process and move on to discuss how it fits into the broader scope of water sample analysis. I'll then focus on two major challenges to SPE technology and how these solutions are developed, giving some practical examples towards the end to illustrate these solutions. So how does SPE fit into the traditional extraction techniques? Well, SPE resolves many of the problems associated with continuous and liquid-liquid extraction, not the least of which are things like emulsions, large amounts of glassware to wash and to use, and large amounts of solvents. More importantly, though, SPE allows us to be more selective with our chemistry, rather than taking a brute force approach, such as liquid-liquid. Because there are so many SBE sorbents to choose from, we can typically isolate the compounds of interest faster and more efficiently than traditional techniques. The most common forms of SBE involve selecting between using either a cartridge or a disc format. Cartridges are great for small volume samples which have little or no suspended solids in them, while discs are great for large volume samples which can run the range from clean to dirty. The key difference between the two formats is the speed with which we process the sample water through the sorbent bed before our target analytes break through. If we were to set up a side-by-side -side run using both SBE formats and the same processing speed, a cartridge would be more likely to have a target analyte break through. I'd like to introduce you to what Horizon calls the water sample spectrum. As you can see, we start off on the left with small volumes of clean water and progress up to large volumes of dirty water. As I said, SBE cartridges fit into the left-hand side of the chart, progressing from small volumes of clean water to large volumes of relatively clean water. Traditional SBE discs can run everything that a cartridge can, but extends the range upward into the dirtier side of the spectrum due to their larger surface area. But the question is, how do we process the really dirty samples using SBE? This leads to one of the main challenges in SBE. How do we prevent an SBE disk from plugging due to high amounts of suspended solids. Convention says that if we increase the surface area from a cartridge to a 47 millimeter disc, allowing us to process even wider ranges of samples, then if we increase the size again to a 90 millimeter disc, this will allow us to process even more sediment. However, there's a catch. As the diameter increases, the amount of sorbent used to create the disc increases also, and the added cost associated with that extra packing material makes this an unattractive option. On top of that, why would I want to use extra packing material when the capacity of the media within a standard 47 millimeter SBE disc is more than enough to retain most lists of compounds? What we really need is a way to use a large 100 millimeter size pre-filter with a standard 47 millimeter disc. This is where the fast flow sediment disc holder comes in. It gives us a large 100 millimeter reservoir fit for large pre-filters, but still gives us the economy of a 47 millimeter SBE disc. Here's an example of a 1 liter sample that was spiked with 35 grams of bentonite clay. It processed the water in 15 minutes. 
more importantly, here's an example of a customer sample that I received for EPA 8270 analysis. It contained so much solids that the customer only sent me 500 mils. I used the fast flow sediment disc holder with both a 1 and a 5 micron pre-filter and filtered the water through under acidic conditions in 22 minutes. I then added base to the recollected sample water, which turned it that magnificent shade of blue, and filtered it again using both an SPE disc and a carbon cartridge in 25 minutes. So bringing us back to the water sample spectrum, the solution to running dirty samples is to use the fast flow sediment disc holder. So now we can process that dirty sample that you have, but how do we ensure that we retain a full range of compounds on the media? To start with, the most important part of solid phase extraction is to understand the types of compounds that we're looking for. The class or functionality of the target compounds will allow us to select a sorbent which uses the proper retention mechanism and allow us then to perform an efficient extraction of the target compounds. One of the keys to successful method development is to analyze the effect that all steps have in the process when you're recovering your target analyte. To do this correctly, you have to start at the back end of the process. This means that to develop that method that you're looking for, you need to first characterize the analytical instrument then back up one step and characterize the evaporation process, then the drying process, and lastly the extraction process. To highlight how Horizon has gone through this process to find a solution to our retention questions, it's best if we work through a set of examples. In this case, I will speak of Horizon's work with EPA Methods 8270 and also of a case involving five organophosphorus pesticides from our international team. For those of you who may not know, Method 8270's focus is on a wide range of semi-volatile compounds. Everything from PAHs to pesticides to phenols are included and a full list can be up to 200 compounds. Most labs, however, only run a subset of about 100 to 150 compounds. It's important to note that the true challenge here is not any single class of compounds, but because there are so many different sorbent types which will work on just one class. The true challenge here is to get all of the classes in one extraction procedure. This chart shows the evolution of Horizons research into this challenging 8270 method. The top section illustrates the technology needed to capture the specific class or to hit a performance specification that's listed in the bottom section. To start with, Horizon found that the commonly available sorbents such as DVB and HLB work well for most of the compounds. However, there were still holes in the target list and recoveries were unacceptable. For some of the targets, their recoveries depended strongly on whether the sample water was made acidic or basic, while for the lighter molecular weight compounds, we got barely anything recovered. To combat this, we developed a dual pass technique and a carbon cartridge. This solution allowed us to run a sample first under acidic conditions and then again under basic conditions, and to capture light end compounds on a carbon cartridge. This worked well but some real-world samples still challenged us by forming precipitates when base was added to the sample. This led us to the next development and the work that I'll discuss. In 2011, Horizon introduced a hybrid HLB ion exchange disk, which was specifically formulated to allow us to do the entire extraction procedure for 8270 using only a single pass of the water sample through an SBE disk. To outline the extraction process, let's start with your sample. First, we acidify your sample to pH 2 using hydrochloric acid, and we process the sample through both an SBE disk and a carbon cartridge, collecting the eluent from the SBE disk. 
Next, we change the collection vessel and elute the disc a second time, this time using a 1% ammonium hydroxide solution to release the compounds from the ion exchange portion of the disc. Lastly, we elute the carbon cartridge. From here, we dry and concentrate the extracts and analyze them on a GCMS. The best way to start the discussion with data is to illustrate a set of data where some of the 8270 targets were extracted in a traditional fashion. In this case, the samples were extracted using liquid-liquid extraction, dried using sodium sulfate, and concentrated using a combination of a Caderna Danish and a nitrogen blowdown device. While many of the recoveries are acceptable, there are also many of the compounds which are not acceptable, including one surrogate. In comparison, using a one-pass SBE disc with a carbon cartridge, our recoveries generally exceed all of those of the liquid-liquid extraction. In this table, the colors correspond to the different elution st steps. If you remember, there are three. The red illustrates the first elution, which directly follows the loading of the sample onto the SBE disc. The blue corresponds to the additional recoveries for our targets during the ion exchange step. The black shows the recoveries which directly correspond to the use of the carbon cartridge. In a slightly different circumstance, the Taiwanese government asked Horizon to develop a method to extract five organophosphorus pesticides using a single SBE disc. While this may not seem like much of a problem at first blush, the hydrophilic nature of methamidifos complicates the procedure dramatically. As stated earlier, the best way to perform an investigation is to start at the back end of the procedure. In this case, we started by examining the concentration step. Then we went backwards and tried the drying step, and lastly, the extraction step. For this study, we made use of a dry vap concentrator, which allows us to both dry and concentrate an extract to the final volume automatically. The reason I point this out is that due to the hydrophilic nature of the targets, a key to this process is the use of the dry disc separation membrane, which acts to physically separate any water within the final extract from the organic phase. This phase separation, rather than the traditional chemical absorption using sodium sulfate, prevents the inadvertent absorption of the targets and allows us to isolate the water for re-extraction if necessary during the method development phase. To start, the concentration process was investigated by performing a direct spike of the targets into a dry mix of 2080 acetone DCM with concentration to final volume of 1 mil. The results proved extremely promising with excellent average recoveries and RSDs less than 10%. To investigate the extraction process, the 8270 one-pass hardware kit was installed. This gave us the ability to use a carbon cartridge as well as an SBE disc. The sample was adjusted to a pH of 2 and run using a SpeedX extractor. This experiment was done using both an HLBH disc and a carbon cartridge. The data on this slide represents only the recoveries associated with the HLBH disc. While the recoveries are good for the most part, the recovery of methamidifos is extremely low. This is most likely due to its hydrophilic nature, but in any event, we need to find a way to capture it. This data represents the carbon fraction of the previous experiment, and we can clearly see that the HLB disk is not fully capturing all the analytes. In fact, the majority of the recovery for the most hydrophilic compounds comes from the carbon cartridge.
When we added the two sets of data together, we get a better picture of the overall precision and accuracy of the extraction. You can see the RSDs are all less than 10% and the recoveries were acceptable for the analysis for this customer. However, we're still missing roughly 35% of one compound and we wanted to know where it was hiding. So one of the great results about using the dry disk to separate the water rather than the sodium sulfate was that the water was able to be re-extracted to see if the targets had repartitioned into the water. In this case, we performed a simple liquid-liquid shakeout using the water removed in the drying phase and were able to prove that the compounds had in fact repartitioned. What you see is the results from three procedures using an HLBH disc, a carbon cartridge, and then a liquid-liquid extraction at the last step. When compared across multiple runs, the full HLBH carbon liquid-liquid extraction technique yields excellent results. Further, we can now give a solution to get even better recoveries if it turns out that that's what's needed. So we can conclude that, due to the recent developments in SBE accessories, a wider range of dirtier samples can now be processed and, by selecting the appropriate SBE sorbent based on our target list, we can achieve excellent recoveries. Thank you for your time and please feel free to contact Horizon Technology if you have any further questions.